And all that actually happened was he went to the hospital for a virus for a polypus in the nose. In those days, that was quite a simple operation. And he went in on the Saturday and Sunday and had the operation on Monday, which was quite satisfactory. And he came home on the Saturday. Well, we were quite aware that there was something not quite right with the operation. And so we got the doctor, well, he wasn't too happy about it, but he didn't think it warranted any returning to hospital. Well, on the Sunday, he was absolutely delirious and got the poor pain, came the morphine. And he was taken back to the hospital, and there he died with meningitis. He got picked up meningitis, and presumably in the hospital, you know, you can't say that, of course. Yeah. But that's what it appeared to be a bit of a drug, of course. 1939, they had not got the facilities for dealing with it. Mm. And he died within a week. So he's quite a young man, wasn't he? He was 47. Oh, that's mm. And it's very sad because he was at the height of his railway career, and I'm sure, had he lived, I should have been in today. I'm sure we should have moved away you know, to larger ones. Mm. Had you started working in the railway then? Yes, you? yes. So yes. that he died in the April 39, and then I. I was actually at the grammar school at the time, and the mother being a widow, and of course she had to think of money in those days, um, and so she thought, well, I ought to be thinking about a job. And of course she had very close contacts with the railway, the heads of the railway, and they did anything they could for her because my father was respected by the hierarchy there very much for his railway work and so for his advocates work on the railway. And so in November or so of that year she had a letter to say there was a vacancy at the station for a junior club. Would I be her son be interested? And although I hadn't finished, I should have stopped at the grammar school for another two years, I suppose really. Um, this job was available and it was, well I say essential for me to get a job. It was fairly important, and in those days, jobs weren't easy, of course. And so, I would decide, I said, she said, you might like the job, I said, well, yes, I was really always interested in trials, you know. <laughs> and so I took the job, so I started on the 5th of December, 1939, at Hunter Station, working with the Great Western Railway Company. And that was how my railway career started. And you worked for it all your life, did you? Yes, yes, I worked <coughs> for the railways for my life. And you went from here to? Well, I actually, um, I was here for a few years, then I went to Thatcher Station for mm. a year, and I worked there also during the war years that was, and was that was that was that was that was because of the army then by Thatcher. Mm. Then I came back to Newbury and spent many years in Newbury, and then I invited to Newbury to Reading, and uh, spent many years there. Lifelong interest in it? <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. So in other words, I suppose, um, Railway has been my work and career because I'm still very interested in it as a hobby. Steam railways, which I visit periodically. Oh in fact, I'm going next Sunday down to Kent to Kent to see oh. the Kent to the Sussex Steam Railway. Oh, um, this is before your time, but when was the present railway bridge constructed? The present railway bridge was put in about 1970. We've had three railway bridges across the High Street. One, when it was a single track going down to the West Country. Then we had a second bridge, and we had the third bridge in about 19... Oh, it's quite like relative. It's been new. I thought it'd been there no. a long, long time. <coughs> no, we haven't. Mm. Mind you, they were very similar. I have got photographs of signs. Mm. Of course, it takes a terrific amount of... Uh, Fast trains there. Oh yes. oh yes. Some friends of ours were staying. It's nothing to do with it actually. Not many details about the school. Thinking about um, when I first started school at the little infants on in Fairview Road. Have you got the names of the teachers there? Uh, did, did Pat's mum? <coughs> one or two. two. There were three. Two. When started I started in 1911. Yes, I was ten. Well, when I was there in 19, the early 1930s, um, there were three teachers in. School. There was a Miss Collie, she was the head teacher there. 
there was a spot in her great belly. She was nearly as wide as she was tall. <laughs> it's actually amusing to children, as you may guess. And there was a Miss Nulse, who was a much younger person. Well, I said, much younger. These other ladies were in their fifties when I was in school, but this Miss Nulse, she was 25, 30, I suppose. Mm -hmm. To us, she was much younger. And she, I suppose, she was more human, as perhaps I put it, or more in touch with the gender with the younger young, children. Mm -hmm. And we did appreciate her, I think, really. Mm -hmm. <coughs> she took the first class, and these other two ladies, um, we followed on three years we were there with these other two names. Is that until you were about eight? Yes, that's right. Then, I was five, six, seven, then when I was eight, we went across the two seniors. <coughs> and there, there were about nine, ten masters and mistresses. And there was a Mr. G, who was the head of masters. What, Mr. G? G O. G O. G E A L. Oh, yes. And he was a fairly big um, man, tall man, a very suitable man for a headmaster, typical in those days, with rather Victorian ideas, and of course he was a strict disciplinarian, as you can imagine. And you didn't get away with anything with him, or no one 